Hey everybody, welcome to the Wait What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 39. I am Brett, aka Enigma9011, and today I am joined by Brent, aka Uber Brent over there. Hello. Fantastic Twitch streamer. Uh, you guys should all go check him out Duh. if you don't already. Um, let's see, I met Brent at TwitchCon this year, kind of out of the blue at a random Snowbike Mike slash kind of funny gathering I don't know what you want to call it. Nerf gun extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it, it was kind of a last minute thrown together like, hey, there's people here that are kind of funny best friends and let's just yep. all get together and mm-hmm. uh Snowbike Mike put up the the kind of funny symbol up in the up in the clouds and I just we all naturally followed it to its uh to its source and yeah. The the rest is history. We we had some laughs. I uh I dove in in the nerf gun arena and <laughs> tore my twitch bag uh, um, it was it was a it was worth it though it was a ton of fun i had a blast these glasses came from that actually oddly enough yeah i had no idea that that was the thing uh, yeah, <laughs> these are like the, a while after yeah all right nice well who would have thought that twitchcon would have gave you such a memorable icon i guess i don't know every time i see it that's <laughs> just there <laughs> well i've always like my 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 symbol or my logo or whatever has always been the uh the orange glasses like oh, okay. ever since 2000 i want to say 13 i think is when this idea came around and mm-hmm. you know i always wanted to get orange glasses to go with it but i could just never find a, a pair that i liked you know the closest ones mm-hmm. i had were like these really wire frame see-through orange ones which are good but they're not the big orange ones because i wear big glasses Mm. and so when we went to that event and they were handing out the safety glasses they were bright yellow i think you'll remember yeah and i i the the lady that was handing them out i go oh my god these are perfect i wish you had orange ones because that's literally my logo and i pulled out like my business card and i'm like see look like this and she goes Mm mm-hmm wait here a second and she just disappears <laughs> for like you know five minutes and comes back and she's like every day we had a different color and uh... orange ones was friday granted i think the day that we were there was sunday maybe yes. yeah yeah so <laughs> so she goes here you can just have these because otherwise we're gonna throw them out i'm like oh my god this is perfect I, I i like dropped to my knees and thanked there i was like this is the best thing nice wow all right should have just gotten the pixel shades and had actual lenses put in. <laughs> another kind of funny best friends i got the pixel shades thing going on so i don't know cross marketing or whatever yeah. you want to call it <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh it's been a blast getting to know brent and checking out his stream so i'm glad he's on the podcast and hanging out with us today um, if you guys don't know what the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast is, it's a conversational podcast. We each bring a topic to the table, and we talk about it for your amusement. Uh, new guests will also go through a special topic three, the lightning round, which we'll get to later. Ooh. But you can check out the podcast live every first and third Saturday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and get in the chat like a lot of you guys are right now and join in on the conversation. If you can't catch it live, that's okay. You can catch it over on YouTube.com. Search Enigma 911 where the videos are broken out topic by topic, but also put as one big video on Friday so you can check it out there. Lastly, if you have any topics for us, you can always join us in Discord and put it in the Discord tab specifically for topics there or just put it in the comment section down below and maybe we'll get to it. And I said last thing, but not last thing. Also, sponsoring the... Wait, what are we talking about? Podcast is the merch store. You can check that out and get all of your Enigma ninety and Enigma ninety eleven <laughs> swag over there. Just like this T shirt, someone happens to be wearing. But you can rep the merch and uh, get that and uh, have some fun with it. Was, but yeah, check it out. I was gonna say that looks like an awfully fancy shirt, and I was gonna ask yes. where I could get one. You know, if I was interested in wearing a ni- an Enigma ninety eleven shirt. So I'm glad you were able to cover that. Yep, there you go. All right, Brent. So we talked about topics. We got some interesting ones today. We're going to start with mine. And I'm ready to dive into this 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 foot hole, whatever this is. Head first. (laughs) So I've heard on your stream you talk about anime, or as I like to call it, anime. And I want to (laughs) know, as a very casual fan myself in anime, I don't know a lot of the ins and outs, the who, what's, whatever it is. Okay. 
I want to know your history with anime, what you're watching currently, and what would be your recommendations for someone maybe trying to get into it, I guess. Sure. So let's let's start with Uber Brent's history anime 101 <laughs> life story. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anime for me uh, is something I, I really got into while I, well, I was still pretty young. Um, I discovered anime probably around sixth grade i want to say i I was i was still in grade school at the time and Mm -hmm. i stumbled across this was on the usa network in the morning um a little show that some of you may have heard before it's called sailor moon um i i I really took to it pretty quickly because it was i've always been a fan of cartoons and watching cartoons and things like that what really separated sailor moon from all of the other shows that I would watch. Because, you know, at the time I was watching things like uh, Doug and Rugrats and Cow and Chicken and Dexter's Mm -hmm. Laboratory. Like, there were all all these shows that were... I I mean, they were cartoons. They were made for kids. They were uh, jokey and they were full of, you know, stories were were self-contained. You know, there was no continuity between anything. Mm-hmm. So I I happened to catch like the very first episode of Sailor Moon <laughs> and of course Lady in Wonderland. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sailor, Sailor Moon is the best still to this day. I I'll, I'll fight anybody over that. Um <laughs> so I watched this show and it struck me right away because it was it was cartoon, it was animated and I'm like, "Okay, this is pretty cool." Um mm. and it what struck me right out of the gate is it told like a really good story. It wasn't just slapstick. Like there was, there was emotion. There was, uh, the, like people, people were interacting and, and, and having human reactions to things that were happening. Granted, there were still jokes, you know, that's, that sort of thing still existed, but it really did a lot with, with being like a more mature show but while still being a cartoon. And at when I was younger, I'm like, man, that's crazy. So, you know, I watched that first episode. And I'm like, this is this is really neat. I want to watch more of this. So, you know, next day, come back, same time. Episode two is going on. And I was shocked when I found out that uh, the next episode directly followed the first episode. And when I say that, I mean, like, the plot carried over. Like, the events from right. the first episode were happening in the second episode and i'm thinking to myself like this is this is something different like this is giving me the same because even a lot of adult shows and when i say adult shows i mean things like seinfeld and uh sitcoms back in the early Mm -hmm. 80s and 90s there wasn't much of like an ongoing story arc or continuity between episodes so the fact that i was getting this this like piecemeal story fed to me where you know, there was the, there was awesome action. There was like these really crazy moments of transformation and just like, it it really kind of uh, like, like inspired me. I'm like, man, this is, this is really great how it's not just, you know, it's not just 15 to 20 minutes of jokes. And then I go about my Mm -hmm. day. It felt like at the end of the episode, I, I, I felt something and it, it changed kind of the way that I, 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 viewed shows in general uh so th- so that was kind of like my first little taste of anime was with sailor moon and I-, I watched it that whole summer like every morning i would wake up as early as i could to make sure i was there to see the next you know exploit of uh sailor moon and then she would meet sailor mercury and sailor mm-hmm. mars and sailor jupiter and like the cast continued to grow and, and it really sucked me into the plot like right down to the 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 end of the first arc with uh queen barrel she was the man, main antagonist in arc one uh like that episode was was outright stunning like they had to combine their powers and it's 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 old trope stuff now at this point you know it's not anything mm-hmm. we even heard of but <laughs> just at the time like having that emotional high point where everything came together and they all had to you know dig deep and 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 get past their their you know, insecurities and, and defeat evil kind of thing. So, so 
that was that was my introduction to anime. From there, it kind of spiraled into uh, Saturday morning on Sci-Fi. I want to say, okay, they would put up just a random anime movie, hmm. and it was like a two hour, two and a half hour, like standalone anime movie that they would show, and I taped those forever. But uh, one that really stuck out to me was Tenchi Muyo, which uh, <laughs> Tenchi Muyo is a kind of a harem anime. You know, that's something I realize now, but at the time, of course, I didn't. Um, but they had a really good one where it was Tenchi Muyo. It's called Tenchi Muyo in Love. And he goes back in time to make sure his mom, it's back to the future, essentially. He makes sure that his mom and dad get together so he doesn't disappear. And there's also an intergalactic. Uh, criminal who's trying to alter the past. So, mm-hmm. you know, that whole thing happens too. But, um, you know, that that is another show that really left uh, left uh, an impression with, with, with young Brent. And, mm-hmm. and then from there, you know, it kind of spiraled off into uh, Dragon Ball Z. That's when Toonami started getting big and you could see Dragon Ball. And, you know, they, they, they had like... Uh, even Adult Swim started getting into it where you could see Cowboy Bebop and yep. Trigun and, uh, boy, I'm, I know I'm missing a couple. Outlaw Star, Big O. Like, these are all just seminal building blocks for, for kind of my anime obsession. Uh, but, yeah, that's, hmm. that's, uh, that's, kind of, that's kind of where the whole thing started. And it just kind of snowballed and snowballed until here I am today where I, I watch – I watch a lot of anime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the Tenshi Muyo call out because I remember as a kid, I think it was around that same block that you just mentioned with Dragon Ball Z because mm-hmm. I also picked up on that. But I remember watching that and I must have caught it early or I don't know. But yeah, it was like he just learned about, I don't remember characters' names, but the first girl that like crashed down there. And then, yeah, I just remember, like, all these new girls popping up. And as a kid, I was like, wow, she's pretty. <laughs> oh, da, da. This guy's like, what the? <laughs> and then there's the shit goes to fucking. <laughs> I, 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 the way it does. I had a very deep yearning in my heart as a child for Ryoko. <laughs> she was just mm. the best. She was strong. She beat up all the enemies. She didn't take shit from nobody. Oh, man. Ryoko was what she was my girl. Mm hmm. So yeah, I appreciate that. I've I've been meaning to go back and watch it and maybe finally understand or at least <laughs> pick up on what was going on because yeah, I don't remember. I just remember details of this was that and that whatever. Um, but yeah, for me, Dragon Ball Z was the big one. Like I watched Sailor Moon maybe once in a blue moon, <laughs> um, and then I don't know. It was pr- I didn't really watch any Adult Swim stuff, but yeah, Dragon Ball Z was the one I remember watching. I remember the big events. I don't remember like anything specific until like later on when I went back and finally got the seasons and was watching through. I was like, wow, there's a lot of episodes. We're just in a spaceship. Yeah. All right. <laughs> is he going to be there? Nope. We'll find out in five episodes. All righty. That was, uh, but... that was one of the, the, you, you had to really have a passion for Dragon Ball Z when you were watching Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z live. Cause you only got one new episode, I think a week. Mm-hmm. It was either one a week or they would run. No, you know what they would do is every day they would run a new episode, but they would catch up too quick. So then they would start over. Oh, That's okay. what they would do. Okay. So you would watch like five episodes or six episodes and you'd be like, man, this is getting really good. You know, they're about to actually fight something hmm. or, or or the the one that got me in junior high was it was literally one to two episodes before Goku first turn super saiyan which okay. is that it's a thing that like i i knew existed for for a couple years at this point like i was ready to see goku turn super saiyan i, I was so excited for it and it was it was the arc it was the moment you know for those of you who watched it krillin got blew up goku mm-hmm. was very upset about it um and Something is about to happen. Something will happen in five <laughs> episodes. Yeah, that's exactly it, lady. So the, they they built it up where it's like, here is Goku. He's he's just about to push past his limit. Like you can see the gold start to 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 swirl up a little bit, and you're like, he's about to go Super Saiyan. This I've <laughs> wanted this forever. And then they'd be like, 
Well, we're out of new episodes, so Raditz is back, and we're going to deal with Raditz again. I'm like, no, I will not wait another (laughs) three months to get back to this point where I can watch Goku turn Super Saiyan. Yeah. yeah, Oh, that was painful as a child. (laughs) It really was. Uh, But yeah, I think that was my main, well, not main uh, introduction to it, because obviously Pokemon and Digimon and those things. But uh, I think those were like the, not outliers, but. I, I far from the norm, I guess. Tenchi Muyo would be my yeah. Most. Tenchi Muyo is like a definitely a deep cut, and you know mm. something like Pokemon. Even if you're not an anime fan, is as a kid you probably watched because right. Pokemon was just everything at that at that time. Oh yeah, you know, oh yeah. Pokemon hit me when I was in junior high. I want to say I was in seventh grade when I got red. Okay, and it, I mean you know the rest is history from there. I've been playing it ever since. <laughs> I'm. I, I am well past my junior high days at this point, still playing Pokemon. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was that was definitely. Uh, I I got into those bigger shows like you know your your Dragon Balls, your Sailor Moons, your Pokemon's, things like that. But you know, I even would go to and again dating myself big time here. I would go to Blockbuster, where they had mm-hmm. a very fledgling anime section. And it was funny because th- they never had like full series of something. So you would just have like, a, it, like one VHS that had three episodes of uh, Ranma one half, which again, okay, like real kind of deep cut weird anime R- Ranma one half, mm-hmm. where if the main character gets doused in hot water, he turns into a boy. And if he gets doused in cold water, he turns into a girl. Oh. Okay, very, yeah, I've heard about that. <laughs> very very strange anime, but uh you know, I, I would get to the point where I would I would rent that that one VHS where it's like three episodes in the middle of whatever arc just because I'm like I I, I still don't fully grasp what this is or how it works, but I just love mm-hmm. it. It's so good. And huh. you know, it it it's something that never really fell off. I I, I continue to watch anime. Um you know, uh, to this day, which I'm, I'm sure we'll get to it pretty soon here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Lady likes Ranma as well. And then Jeff Reg still is the first Ranma movie. Oh, Jeff okay. Reg, Can we please watch that together? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you alluded to, you still love anime and you're still into it very much. What are you watching currently? So on the anime spectrum, you know what? I'm, I'm going to cheat just a little bit because I'm, I'm, okay. I'm legitimately watching probably 10 to 15 shows right now jesus okay so like this is one thing that this is a really weird way that anime has turned me around so it used to be a hundred years ago where you would watch shows once per week when it would come out yeah and that was fine whatever the case may be well then netflix comes out and it's like oh binge we're just gonna drop Mm -hmm. a whole season on you and you're gonna watch it and it's great which is totally fine um what has kind of been what i've been getting into lately is getting back into watching current season anime where you only get one new episode every week Mm, okay so like that anticipation for for new episodes and stuff like really actually is meaningful a lot more than i gave it credit for yeah i i get that i've been doing um the same thing with game of thrones i had little interest with it prior like i was like oh that's cool but you know i'm not really gonna check it out and then my friend kevin and then lady has also kind of been on my butt to finally watch it so the last few times we've hung out it's been like binge watching that so like Mm -hmm. maybe last week i finally finished season seven so now i'm going into this final season with the week i'm like okay cool (laughs) (laughs) so we'll see how that goes but yeah i understand it's it's definitely a different I guess feeling and just how overall how things are. There's a very real like sense of zeitgeist and talking about like, okay, so like, like literally I I have viewing parties for, you know, going to game of Thrones here real quick. I have uh, viewing parties with one of my buddies where we, Mm -hmm. uh, I go to his house. uh, We usually get like Turkey legs or, you know, (laughs) like, like we, we make it an event, you know, I, I, I go buy mead which is delicious mm-hmm. by the way. If you've never had mead, it's it's mm. it's just wine but it's made with honey and it's so good. Um All right. But yeah, we uh 
Like, like we kind of go all out on it and we just sit down. Nobody has their phone out. Nobody talks. It's just absorb what happens. And then we just sit and talk about it. But like yeah. having that week to week sort of mentality and feel, it gets people talking about, you know, all of the different things that happen and what they think is going to happen. You know, there, there's yeah. something kind of magical about, you know, that, that, that's what lost did so long ago. You know, everybody mm-hmm. wanted to talk about like, Oh my God, what did this mean? And what did that mean? And yeah, ha- having that kind of week to week mentality or feel kind of makes it feel special again. Yeah. Thinking about it, it's kind of almost like a movie mentality. Like when you step out of the movie theater, like there's that buzz between you and oh, yeah. whoever you saw it with. It's the same idea just with a TV show. I never thought about it that way, but obviously it's more open because you know, something's definitively happening next week. Oh, sure. Absolutely. What's going on. Yeah. yeah. So just expands on those conversations you're already having, I guess, post cinema viewing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so for shows I'm watching right now, I had to crunchy roll because there's just mm-hmm. no way I was going to remember everything off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. So I'm watching mob psycho 100 part two, okay. which is, do you want descriptions of all of these? Cause I'm more than willing to, if you want, I'll, I'll, give, I'll sure. give short little blurbs on each of them. <laughs> okay. This all is right. about a boy named mob who has uh, ESP powers and he's like a super powerful psychic, but he's very socially awkward and he okay. has to suppress his, social behaviors because if his emotions overtake him he gets way too powerful and starts messing stuff up Uh, okay very good show very strange show but i like it uh i'm watching the rising of the shield hero which is there's this whole brand of anime called isekais which uh isekai is essentially boy from or girl human being from modern day japan gets transported magically somehow into a fantasy based world. Usually there's like some sort of video game mechanic to it. Uh, Okay. But that's, that's kind of the, you know, sword art online kind of started the whole isekai Mm. thing, but um, yeah. Rising of the shield hero. It's just a really competent one of those. So I guess I don't want (laughs) to, I I won't go too much into that one. Uh, I'm watching the promised Neverland, which is so good. So good. Like, I, I, I don't even want to describe it. Every one of my friends who watches anime, I, I've suggested this show to them, and they go, well, what is it about? And I go, I can't tell you. Because <laughs> if I tell you, it's going to ruin the first episode, and that first episode, if you go into it blind, will hook you so hard. And, and like, I went into it blind, and the 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 intro to the song, to the show is just a banger. It's it, it it's so good and it, you ha- you just gotta watch it. Okay. Um, I am watching Black Clover, which is uh, shown in trash. <laughs> I, I I've decided that I'm shown in trash, and I will watch anything that's uh, shown in is just like your Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, mm. uh, Bleach, One Piece. You know, I you can kind of go down the list. It's like. Main character has to continually get stronger to overcome all of the obstacles that is before them. It's, it, it, you know, it, it's it's every major anime, and it's it's mm-hmm. called Shonen, and it's trash. And I'm a trash boy for loving it, and I'll never stop. <laughs> um, I'm watching a show called Boogie Pop and Others. Boogie Pop is a remake of an old show called Boogie Pop Phantom, and it's kind of a really bizarre like horror uh type anime but they do interesting things with how they tell the story like boogie pop boogie pop's first episode shows you the very beginning of the story and the very end of it and you're okay. and you watch that first episode you go uh what <laughs> mm-hmm. and it, you just as you watch more episodes it kind of fills in a lot of those gaps and you're like oh okay then this makes sense and then because I have this knowledge, then I know this is going to happen, and you kind of piece it all together. Uh-huh. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else am I watching? I am watching Kaguya-sama: Love Is War, which is uh, a show about the president of of a uh, of a high school. Not the president, but the uh, student council president and the mm-hmm. assistant student council president, and they both like each other. But uh, if they if they're the first one to admit it to the other, then they lose the power in the relationship. 
So they just sit there and like plot on each other on how they're going to get the other one to trip up and admit that they like the other one. It's okay. really goofy, but it's cute. You're, you're, you're <laughs> there's a there's a through line about cute anime. I just like it. Um, I am watching Run Like the Wind, or I'm sorry, Run with the Wind, which is a show that's just about running. <laughs> it's it's like you know, it, it's a group of ten boys that are gonna that want to try and run this really difficult marathon, and okay. uh, one of the boys is is new to the group and. He's a really good runner, and the other ones aren't runners at all, and they all kind of get like dragged into to doing it. But then they they grow to love it, and you know they help each other out and do their best. It's uh, it's hmm. pretty good. It's a sports anime, yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a sports anime. Which sports anime? I'm gonna tell you this right now. <clears throat> sports anime just knows what it's doing. I watched a show over this last week. I was pretty sick, so I spent three days in, in bed watching anime Yee. and I watched a show called Yuri on ice. Which okay. Is, yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a show that's specifically about ice skating. I, I don't like ice skating. I've never watched ice skating. I don't have any like interest in ice skating, but by the end of it, I knew his whole routine. I Like <laughs> when, when, when the song Yuri on ice would start, I, my te- my eyes would tear up. And, I'm, huh. and I would sit there and be like, "Oh my god, please don't fall when you do your, when you do your double axle." Oh man, here comes the three <laughs> jump combination. He's, he he only gets this like sometimes. He really needs to nail it. Like, just, <laughs> I, I it it has a way of like just really getting you invested in what's going on, and it, it it's it's mind blowing. It's 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 such a it's such a cool thing. Um. I think those are it. Okay. I'm sure I'm missing something somewhere, but yeah, no, it's, it's like I say, it's, it, it, I, I, oh, I'm missing Jojo. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, uh, I heard that one. Too. Yeah, Jojo's uh, season five is going on right now, and Jojo's is fantastic. It's okay. so super good. It's, it's kind of shonen y. But it's it's a little bit smarter about how it does some of those shonen tropes, and it's mm-hmm. it's really smart about how it shows powers. Like it's not like so many shows are just like ah, I'm so strong I can punch the hardest, but like mm-hmm. this show will have some guy whose power is that uh, the he has a gun and he shoots bullets and the bullets are are his actual power. And he can shoot three bullets and they can like kick the bullets amongst themselves to make it like ricochet in a way that it hits a dude. So just hmm. interesting ways that the that all the powers kind of interplay with one another. It's 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 a pretty special show. Okay. Hmm. All right. So out of that list, I only recognized two. <laughs> Not that I knew anything about them, but just in name I recognized them. Yeah. So there's one I know that's like, it seems like it's exploded as of recently. Then I hear its name a lot, and I don't know your opinion on it. It's My Hero Academia. Oh, I think I'm saying that yes, right. Yes, you are. Okay. What are we? <laughs> what are, what's feelings on that? My one? Hero <laughs> Academia is also a shown in anime, but um, okay. it, it kind of it does it a little bit differently in that it's it's superheroes like mm-hmm. like almost American style superheroes. Um, it, it it's it's incredibly well told. Uh, you know, it, it, one of the things that it does really well is it keeps its pace moving. So like, unlike your Dragon Ball or your Naruto or your one piece that just goes on and on forever and you never see the end of it, my hero academia gets to the point relatively quick. There's very few episodes that don't have some kind of meaning to it. Um, it's, it's a really great show. Uh, you know, the main character is kind of that underdog that you just want to vote, you know? He just wants to do his best and he just wants to help people and he is born without a quirk, which quirks in that world are like superpowers. And mm. but he still does his best anyway. And then the number one hero all time, all night sees him and is like, You remind me of a young me. So I'm gonna bestow my quirk onto you, which is at you know, this is very early stuff. And I'm gonna give you a shot at being the next me essentially 
and then it's him going to like a, a high school for superheroes. Huh. It's right. it's it's hmm. really good. It's really really good. Hmm. Um, the the emotional impact on some of those episodes, like like, really hits you. It 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 really does. You know the 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 story is told in such a way that the stakes always feel very real and relevant. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mention it because uh, it's not currently airing, so it's not something I'm actively watching. But I, yeah, I, I've enough. watched that series probably four times now. Okay. And then I got a follow up. It's not a series. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's anime. It's anime. Okay. <laughs> but how do you feel about Spirited Away, oh. My Neighbor Totoro? And I haven't seen it, but House of the Moving How- Howling? Howl's Moving, Moving Castle? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the one. <laughs> yeah. Um, those are uh, Studio Ghibli movies, so movies that were mm-hmm. made by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Um, the the closest equivalent when anybody asks me about those movies is those are Disney movies to Japan. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we have all of our old standbys: Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King. These old. I don't want to say old, they're older, but they're Disney movies that are just so special and so seminal. Um, That is what these Miyazaki films are to Japan. Um, Okay. They're, they're told so incredibly well. There's like you said, spirited away is, is probably it's the most well known for sure. Um, But it's, it's also probably one of the best ones I would say, but I mean that, that comes down to a matter of uh, opinion. I, I would I would also I, I would also field an argument for Princess Mononoke. Um that's another oh, okay. that's another Miyazaki film. That was the first one that I ever saw of his. And mm. just the animation is wonderful, the story's wonderful. They've got um had, did you ever play uh man, what's it called? Uh Nino Kuni. No. No. Okay. Heard about it, but no, I haven't played it. Okay. Uh, Nino Kuni. Oh, Jeff Reg points out Ponyo, which is another just mm. wonderful. Like that is a that that is a retelling of the Little Mermaid, but like the Hans Christian Andersen Little Mermaid. Okay, and okay. it's aimed a little bit more towards kids. Like mm. Miyazaki said, he made it for like his five year old niece or something at the time. Um, Ponyo was adorable. I, I I love that movie. That I I watch that with my daughter all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no the, those the, all of those movies are really special um uh, mm-hmm. you know he's he's got such a long list of them there's porco rosso uh you said totoro uh kiki's delivery service um nausicaa and the valley of the wind i mean there's there's uh lapida castle in the sky there's there's so many i, I that's a that's a that's a series that i actually got my mom interested in like she's not an anime fan but she loves mm. Disney movies. So I sat her down to watch uh, Princess Mononoke, which is a little more violent than the other ones, but she mm-hmm. absolutely fell in love with it. And then from there, I actually, she liked Princess Mononoke so much that I went and somehow acquired, I'm not going to say how, uh, an advanced copy of Spirited Away in Japanese that was subtitled. Uh, mm, okay. <clears throat> And I had her sit down and watch a subtitled version of Spirited Away, which is not mm-hmm. something that she would normally do, but she just loved that movie. You know, yeah. that that's something that anybody can like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I've been I've been able to watch Spirited Away and Totoro um out of I mean the three <laughs> I mentioned. Eventually Moving Castle, I assume, will be on the list. Sure. Um uh, but yeah, Spirited Away, like I was going in, I was like, all right, this will be fun. But like, yeah, I liked it way more than I thought it would. Yeah. And it was a fun story and characters were memorable. I love this little spirit circle. Ah, spells broken thing that like that just <laughs> stuck with me. Yep. Um, and then Totoro was just a fun time. Like I, I, I don't know. After watching Spirit Away, I was like, oh, there's going to be this story. And I was like, uh, all right, we just had a fun time with a bunny. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But, all right. <laughs> so, Totoro definitely but, is a little, little bit different. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the call mm-hmm. out here for Lady. You need to, you need to educate. You need to make him watch like Princess Mononoke and all of these other great shows because they are so, so good. Put it on the list. <laughs> Princess Mononoke. That one, that one, you'll, you'll get that one. 
We got on a cat bus. It was great. It was <laughs> oh, I lied. <laughs> says, okay, We're, we we got to figure it out. <laughs> okay, so we talked about your history. We talked about what you're watching currently. The plethora. What would you recommend for maybe someone trying to get into anime? I guess. Uh, I think we touched on it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. For somebody who wants to very first get into anime, you know, the your recommendation is something like uh, a Miyazaki film. Uh, any of those are great. You know, people that are generally not anime fans can watch a Miyazaki film and really fall in love with it because it's just a good animated film. You know, it it mm-hmm. it, it borrows things from Japanese culture, but it doesn't rely on it to the point where it, it can feel alienating to some new people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you ever wanted to get into, like, anime shows, that's even kind of a weird one because... Because in all honesty, there's really an anime for everybody. You know, I, I've i come to learn that I'll watch an anime about, uh, you know, oh, I, I, I there, well, I won't get into it, but there's like a show, mm-hmm. there's, there's shows that like, you know, I got into a show lately called like, well, like Yuri on Ice, you know, that's again, no interest in ice skating, but it was just recommended so highly to me. I'm, I'm like, oh, I got to check it out. And they just do such a good job of selling the characters to you and the, the character struggle and how he overcomes it. And it it, it does it in a way that I, I just don't think you could do. It, you know, using animation allows you to get creative with some things. And when it's done well, it's done so well. Uh, so, some you know, it. I always tell people whatever it is you think that you would have an enjoyment from watching there's an anime for it you know okay that okay. you can if you want to watch a show about ice skating it exists if you want to watch a show about running it exists if you want to watch a show about cooking it exists if you want to watch a show about uh this this boy that is in love with his teacher but then he sleeps with his classmate and then his dad suddenly marries those two girls' mom, and now they're they're siblings. Like that's the that's a description of domestic girlfriend. Like oh boy, like, <laughs> it, it's it, yeah. It, it, it's just there's so many different. Uh... Lady, don't skip ahead. That was my segue. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just so many different. Uh, the, there's an anime out there for everybody. And, you know, if, if you like action, there's something. If you like comedy, there's something. If you like sports, there's something. That's, you know, I there, there's there's always a recommendation. It just depends on what you personally like. Cool. So pulling from the chat who pulled from my mind, <laughs> as I know you're a wrestling fan. It's true. And Asuka's your girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Asuka. Where's the wrestling anime? <laughs> there are. Is there something? Uh... <laughs> Man, is there a wrestling anime? I'm trying to think now. There's got to be. I it, I can't think of one. Mm-hmm. But there's there's no possibility in my mind that there's not a wrestling anime. That's just there's got to be. I mean, there's New got... Japan's huge over oh, there. God, yeah. And even WWE's huge over there. So Yeah. I mean, there's boxing. I know I know mm-hmm. there's boxing animes. Yeah. There's got to be something. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. All right. All right. <laughs> that was funny that she picked up on that. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, Oscar Oscar's wonderful. She's she's definitely one of my favorite wrestlers out there. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to figure out a, a time to get you back on and talk all about wrestling because I did that <laughs> last week with Kyle and we're like, "Oh shit, it's been an hour." That's, all right, next. <laughs> I I think there's just something about Kyle that that draws people to wrestling cuz I I I was oh, yeah. on his show uh nice. several months ago and mm-hmm. and where else did our conversation go to but wrestling? And it was wrestling for a good stretch. So it nice. You just can't not talk about wrestling when Kyle's on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> nice. All right. Well, I think that wraps up topic one pretty nicely about anime and your history with that. So, Brent, what is your topic today? So this is something that uh, I was kind of discussing with a friend not that long ago, and it got me really thinking, but you know, so my history with, with video games goes all the way back to the original Nintendo. Um, Mm. you know, I, I've, I've either owned or played a pretty large majority of those systems. So the question came was, was posed to me, 
what is your favorite video game console? Like, if you could just choose one, like the whole library is available to you. Yeah. But one console that best represents what you love in gaming, and, and whether it's a mix of nostalgia or just generally good games, what is mm-hmm. that? Uh, what is that console that if you had to like, you know, des- almost desert island, like this is your one console for the rest of your life? What what mm-hmm. is it? Okay, so my gaming history. It's a little different. It's not like I didn't grow up with NES, SNES, the Genesis, the Dreamcast, blah, 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 whatever. Like I played a Nintendo Entertainment System. I played Super Mario. I played Duck Hunt. It was at like friends' houses and neighbors' houses, stuff like that. Sure. The first console, well, handheld console and console technically that I owned was a Game Boy Advance. Nice. That was the first thing I owned. And you mentioned this in the previous topic of a little game called Pokemon Red, which I didn't play Red, but I happened to play Silver. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was my first game in, in between second and third grade. Yeah, so that was the, <laughs> that I'm so was the old. first one. <laughs> I knew that was going to be there. I like, ah, how do I I, 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 I played <laughs> Pokemon Red in junior high. <laughs> no, that's what I was no. like. Okay, this is good. It's okay. I have accepted it. I'm 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 170 <laughs> years old. That's fine. Oh boy. <laughs> um so that was my first like I own it console was Game Boy Advance and Pokemon Silver. As for console, my first console was the PlayStation 2. Oh boy. I don't remember when I got that exactly. I just know it was like around the holiday time uh that I got that um, and then from there it just progressed and went Xbox 360 and then PlayStation 3 and then obviously now the consoles and Wii and all that you know jazz. Sure. Um, oh man, this is a tough one because the Xbox 360 was probably one I put the most time into, to be honest. But I don't know if it had the impact of either of those first two. Hey, because <laughs> on Game Boy Advance, obviously with that being my first. Sure. I own it thing. Like I spent so much time in silver. I can't tell me how many times I started that over mm-hmm. and I didn't, it wasn't like I beat it. It was just like, eh, let's try a new starter. Let's go, you know, uh, total dial and then Cinequil this time or whatever. Um, cause elite four, honestly, I sucked at, I could never get past those, <laughs> other fuckers, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I played that a lot. And then a little game called Final Fantasy Tactics Advance came along, and I instantly fell in love with that. Go on. And that, that was <laughs> another one that I didn't get super far into and never even beat until like years later on stream when it was on the Wii U. And I was like, oh, I need to play this again yeah. and did that. Um, but those were the two big ones that stood out to me. I mean, there was a lot of games that I played. Like, Another one was uh, Pokemon Ruby. Like, I put a lot of hours into that, too. Um, and then you had, you know, all the random spin-off movie title games, I guess you could call them, yeah. of, like, Incredibles and this and that and the other thing. Um, so, I mean, those two games specifically have a big impact in my life. But ha, if I got to pick one, like, key system, I think I got to lean p- towards PS2 of just, like, the impact and it's not even that i played like i know you mentioned the whole library i know there's a lot of people whose titles they call out are not the titles i call out like metal gears and stuff like that like i've never played a metal gear at all What? so i don't yeah (laughs) so i don't know no i don't know the impact of that (laughs) that hurts me um yeah um but the big ones for me are uh, it will come no surprise to you i think is kingdom hearts one and kingdom hearts two sure like I love those games. I'm excited for three. I have it on the shelf. It hasn't been open. I'm waiting until I beat the I beat it. remaining of the spin. I <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I still need to beat the remaining spinoff. Sure. Just Dream Drop and uh, 2.8 thingy, whatever they call it. Yeah. Um But yeah, those two games, like they just they like you said, they affected me as a gamer now. And then, as well as, crap, I had it, and then it ran from my head, PS2, come back to me. This isn't the one I was going to call out, but the Battlefront games, Battlefront 1 and 2 for Star Wars, Mm -hmm. those were amazing. Uh, Another one I also wasn't going to shout out, but 007 Nightfire, I played a shit ton of that with friends. Crap, what were you? 
Tell me about it. Tell me about the game. Oh my god, I don't know. It just escaped my head completely. Okay, also another one, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I loved playing that in the yep. arcade, and when that came to console, holy crap. Mm-hmm. Frick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have to think about it, but yeah, PS2 I think would be the definitive one for me, just on like Impact and playing it a lot. Sure. Um, yeah, but what what would you like? What would you say would be yours? Like I know you said you talked about it with a friend, so you probably have your answer locked. But <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, so I actually had a really difficult decision to make when I came down when the question you know gun to your head, what's your favorite console? Mm-hmm. It came down for me between the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation One. Okay. And the reason being throughout the very, I mean, even to this day to a large extent, but the vast majority of my younger years, I was always, always, always a big fan of JRPGs. Okay. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy 2 slash 4, you know, uh, is is the the JRPG that kind of set things in motion for me. I had a an older friend that like kind of showed me the ropes a little bit and about how it works. Cause I was still a little young at the time. I was probably, I mean, I was still in grade school for sure. Probably third grade, second or third grade when I started playing JRPGs. So like my cog, you know, my, uh, I, I, I wasn't cognitively grasping everything that was going on in these games, but I, I was able to get some enjoyment out of the, the the broad strokes of the story and just like you know mm-hmm. battling monsters is a cool thing so um like f- the super nintendo is where my love of jrpg ignited and there are so many great jrpgs on the on the super nintendo you've got uh final fantasy 2 slash 4 and 3 slash 6 um you've got chrono trigger you've got secret of mana You've got uh, Earthbound. Uh, I mean, there there was just a there was a really a wealth of of good JRPGs. Act Razor, oh, Act Razor was so good. Um, <laughs> Jeff, Frank, they start to make sense, don't you? Get don't you start with me on because <laughs> JRPG plots make sense anyway. They, I, I'll, I'll fight you on that later. Um, <laughs> they're like. There, there was such a wealth of JRPGs and honestly, probably some of the best JRPGs of all time exist on the Super Nintendo. So like, I, I, I want to say that it's that, but the, but I, I keep coming back to the PlayStation one because not only did it have those JRPGs, it had final fantasy seven, VII, eight and nine, which are all fantastic games. Um, it had, it had Sui Koden one and two. It had Chrono Cross. It had, Parasite Eve, it had uh, just a just a, a plethora of of phenomenal JRPGs. I, I'm not just going to list them all out because I could go on forever. Um, <laughs> uh. <laughs> don't get me started about Xenogears. That is a game that touches on every subject you can possibly touch on in a video game, and it's fantastic. Um, but uh, not only did it have all of those really great games. Um, it also had things like Metal Gear, you know, it, it, that s- PlayStation one kind of is, is the first system that broke just a little bit of my love of JRPGs and got me into playing other things a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Metal Gear Solid, Brave Fencer Musashi, which, which was a, it, it had RPG elements, but it also was, uh, you know, it, it was, it, at the end of the day, it was a uh, action game, um, you know, and it, it had just it had Resident Evil on it. It had Silent Hill. Um, you know, the 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 PlayStation One is really where my uh, <clears throat> the PlayStation One is really where my love for games kind of reached a new level. I want to say because because mm-hmm. it it introduced me to so much more than jrpgs because so much of of me was playing xeno uh was playing jrpgs forever i i literally read xeno gears and set it up 
Oh my God, Hojo, that's that's a whole other story <laughs> that I could talk for an, an hour and a half about. We won't go there. Um, I, I I had some weird friends. Let's just let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like definitely that's where things started to break off for me, and I started to fall in love with other genres and other things about video games. And it was definitely the the PlayStation that really took that off for me. Mm-hmm. Nice. So <clears throat> what if you had to pick like a couple shout outs, maybe like not even just like the top one, top ones that you mentioned, but just in general, like this game from this platform really was a good one or this one, this one, like your favorite games, I guess, per platform that you've played, maybe perhaps or just shout outs that you would like to give. Wow. Um, I mean, just going over the, you know, Going over the two consoles that I just talked about, uh, mm-hmm. definitely uh, Chrono Trigger for the SNES. Final Fantasy VI is probably my favorite game of all time. Okay. Uh, it there's just no there's just no other game that's like it. It does it, it does so many things that are so forward thinking and tells a story that mm-hmm. still to this day I really don't feel like has been. Uh, done as well as Final Fantasy VI did it. Um, you know, I, I guess spoilers for a game that came out twenty plus years ago at this point, but like Final Fantasy VI is the first game that I can think of that tells like a coherent story where the bad guy wins. Like halfway through that game, you go up onto this floating continent so you can stop the bad guys from gaining all of this power to take over and destroy the world. And you get up there, and your whole team loses. You lose, and you escape wow. the sh- the floating continent like by the skin of your teeth. And then your whole party's thrown to the wind, and everything is miserable. And then the whole world is literally destroyed. That's the midpoint of the game. Wow. There is a whole second half to that game at that point, and it like I was just mind blown because like every story that I ever played was, Oh, you, you, you just go beat the bad guy and right. then you win and everything's <laughs> safe and everybody's happy. No, like the second half of this game is people trying to pick up their broken lives. There's a whole, there's a whole village of orphans because they're all the parents in, in, in this village died. And like uh. one of your party members is doing her best to like keep these kids from dying. <laughs> like uh-huh. that, that's kind of the tone of the second half of that game. Like you, the main wow. character attempt suicide at the beginning if you do things wrong Yikes. so it's it's it like for for a young brent you know again back in grade school at this point that a lot of that kind of went over my head a touch but you, you go right. back and play that now it's like this is dire just mm-hmm. how bad this the all of this got it's mm-hmm. so well done um but yeah i, I guess beyond that when it comes to uh I mean, other shout outs for uh, other consoles, you know, you've got the PlayStation 1. Parasite Eve is one of my all-time favorite games. Ooh, excuse me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Parasite Eve uh, was just, it, 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 was, it took like that Resident Evil, Silent Hill zeitgeist of, of uh, survival horror, but then added in like an element of RPG to it which was just really unique and it was it was so well done and the story was interesting uh that that game I is one of those games that like almost yearly I'll go back and beat um that's just such a great game and then of course Metal Gear on on the regular PlayStation that game is a is a treasure still Kojima cemented his legacy in one fell swoop like that <laughs> Hmm. Very nice. Hmm. All right. Well, that was a good one. Yeah. I. I think it. I don't know. I don't. I. I guess it was Marvel Two. That was the other game. I don't know why I felt like it just popped out of my head. <laughs> like it was something different. I mean, there are other games for sure that you know I played a lot of, but I think yeah. Are, just because Marvel Two had such a impact of, on me and. Sure. fighting games and loving it and then memories of my dad playing in the arcades and not knowing what we're doing and mashing everything but it was just a good old time are, are you <laughs> ready for this whole podcast to come full circle 
Sure. <laughs> so on Netflix right now, there's an anime uh-huh. called High Score Girl that is okay. like exclusively about a, a young girl and a young boy who meet by playing fighting games in Japanese arcades. And like they, Let's go. they take actual footage from like Street Fighter 2 and Ooh. Darkstalkers and like all of these really old classic fighting games and, and like treat them with a lot of respect. Like when 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 Guile's doing his turtle yeah. like like that turtle strategy, <clears throat> like they address that and explain it in the show because it's important. Nice. It, it's okay. Yeah, that's that, that that's my full circle moment because we're talking if we're gonna talk fighting game, I, I gotta talk about High Score Girl. It's so good. Okay, all right. <laughs> hmm. Put it on the list. Yep. <laughs> Write it down. I'll, I'll I'll send you over sixty or seventy recommendations for your anime awesome. pleasure. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome topic. All right, moving on <clears throat> to topic three. So if you're watching the podcast for the first time, whenever we have a new guest on, I like to take them through their lightning round questions just so you kind of get to know them a little bit better. I'm ready. Um, So Brent, I'm going to ask you these questions. I want you to go with your gut reaction, whatever pops in your head first, uh, and feel free to elaborate on any answer you want, (laughs) but you don't have to. You can just say the answer and then we'll move on to the next one. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. What is your favorite color? Uh, Yellow. Nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Cats. Right. Dogs are anything. <clears throat> Cats just leave you alone. <laughs> uh, favorite game? Final Fantasy VI. Favorite movie? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Okay. Uh, favorite type of music? <clears throat> oh. Uh, I want to say video game soundtracks. Is- is that is that an right. is that an answer? Yeah, I'll allow it. Time. Also, <laughs> you got reactions, which is weird, but. <laughs> okay, you love this next one then. Favorite song. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, wow, favorite song of all time. Um, I... <laughs> that's really hard. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh. I don't know that I've got an answer for that one. All right. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that if something just, just hits me over the head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your dream job when you were a kid? Uh, scientist. Wow, okay. Uh, nice. Like ast- astrological science. Like I wanted to go into space. Neat. Um, if, you could, uh, yeah. if you could have any animal to be a pet, what would you pick? Mm, a monkey. I feel like a monkey would just like to hang out and we'd just eat snacks and watch shows. <laughs> oh, hey, Dio. <laughs> uh, if you could meet one celebrity, who would it be? Does not matter scale of celebrity. You know, for the longest time, it, and this is still probably accurate, but I, I – no, you know what? Here's what I'm going to say. It, for a long time, it was Greg Miller. I finally have mm-hmm. met Greg Miller. Stand-up guy. Uh, mm-hmm. but I, I've looked up to him for a good long time. Uh, but it, I, I'd say if there's one celebrity that I could meet right now, it would be Felicia Day. Okay. Very nice. Uh, favorite season. Uh, spring. Honestly, favorite just Halloween. not, just not winter. Just winter is the worst. I hate winter. It's cold. It's snowing. I live in the Midwest. It just sucks. Oh, I'm going to say on that. <laughs> uh, favorite holiday? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Halloween next to my birthday. And it's All right. got spookies, spooky monsters. What is a skill that you wish you could have? Speak Japanese, which I'm actively learning. Nice. All right. And then the final question. What is a game that you want me to play? Oh, I want you to play Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation right. 1 Entertainment Console. Because do you know what that means? <laughs> You're going to play no. that one. 
and then you've got to play Metal Gear 2, <laughs> and then you got to play 3, and then somehow 4, and then you also have to play... Konbanwa, <laughs> Dio-san. Iyo tenki desu ne? Yeah, no, Metal Gear Solid is is magical, and you should play all of them. I'm, I I wouldn't put you through the test of playing like Metal Gear Acid, or, or and even Peace Walker. Peace Walker is good, but mm -hmm. it's it's just a whole other thing that you have to get into. Just just play the main ones. Okay, noted. Brent doesn't know when it snows. <laughs> no, I use so I work from home and mm -hmm. I don't go outside a whole lot because I don't have to. Yeah. So right. sometimes weather happens and I'm unaware of it. Ah. And then there was one viewer question, which I'm a little scared to ask. Jeff Rigg asked, ask Brent's opinion on mashed potatoes. <laughs> He's trying to goad me into talking about something stupid, and it's not a song. It's a minute and a half skit that's ridiculous, followed by 30 seconds of mumbling. Not a song. Mashed potatoes are delicious, and I will say nothing else about it. <laughs> All right, everybody, this has been another episode of the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 39. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and we had Mr. Uber Brent on today. Thank you very much, Brent, for hanging out on the podcast. I do appreciate it. The pleasure's all mine, sir. It was, it was, it was well, fun. I, I could talk for days about a lot of different things. Yeah, like I said, we'll have to have you back on uh, at some point to talk wrestling, because I would love to pick your brain about that. I'm in. Um, and go through. <laughs> nice. Um, remember, guys, you can catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma9011 every first and third Saturday of the month at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. If you can't catch it live, remember you can catch it over on youtube.com. Search Enigma9011 where it's broken out topic by topic or put as one big video for you guys. Um, if you have any topics that you would like us to discuss, you can put them down in the comment section down below or you can join us on Discord and put it in that tab respectively. And then last but not least, remember guys that this podcast is brought to you guys by the merch store so you can get your own Enigma9011 swag, rep it, support the brand, all that fun stuff. It'd be greatly appreciated. Brent, once again, thank you for hanging out today. I do appreciate it, and uh, thanks for being on the podcast. For sure. <laughs> All right, chat. Thanks for hanging out. We will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.